Well, welcome to another episode of The Platform. Great fun to have Matt Sterling on the show. He's a magician, a hypnotist, a stuntman, an actor. He's an absolute entrepreneur and a good guy. And it all came about through Sean Buckley at Ultratune, one of our sponsors. He posted a clip from Britain's Got Talent of uh, Matt doing his thing. And this is what I saw. Uh, I've been performing magic and hypnosis for many years now. Oh, yes. um, however, films have been a huge part of my life for many years. Films can influence us in so many different ways. They can make you feel happy, sad, create anxiety, fear, but most of all, surprise. And hopefully, we're going to inspire some of those today. Now, I've got here a deck of cards. Each card has been printed with the name of a different film, as you can see. Taxi Driver, Wally, Love Actually, Frozen, etc., etc. Each of the judges is going to have a free choice. David, yes. would you just point to the back of one of the cards for me? This one here. David, do not show Alicia. Very important. Alicia. Hey. Would you do me a favor? Would you just point to the back of one of your cards? This one, the top one. Okay, do not show Amanda and do not show David. Amanda. Just point to the back of one of your cards. This one here. Do not show Simon and do not show Alicia. And Simon, yep. you just point to the back of one of the cards. Just point to the back. That one that there. One. I would like you to take it. Do not let Amanda see. I won't. Okay, judges, do you all know the card that you've chosen? Yes. yes. You all know the name of that film? Yes. Yeah. Most importantly, have you seen those films? I had to turn down the lead part in this particular movie. It's a true story. Was it Shrek? You were there so well. Oh, dear, I'm going to get buzzed on this one, aren't we? <laughs> OK, Amanda, this is what I like to do. In a few seconds' time, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. This is very important. Do not open your eyes until I say, do you understand? Yes. Amanda, I'd like you to put your hand out for me like this, your left hand. Good. Close your eyes now. Amanda, keep your eyes closed. Don't say anything. Just really think about the film title. Oh, my God! Keep your eyes closed and focus 100% on the name and the title of the film. Amanda, I would like you to open your eyes. What was the name of the film? Man on Fire. Wow! Across the stage on fire. Simon, you just chose the film. I know it's going to be, it's going to be Say Talk. It's going to be Say Talk. It's Do you know the name? No, wait, wait, wait. Do you... It's going to be Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> hey, Grumpy Old Men. the hell? Why? Sleep. <laughs> this is brilliant. Like a blockbuster movie. Simon, what was the name of your film? Skyfall. Skyfall. <laughs> Alicia, don't say the film out loud. Oh, wow. You thought of The Matrix? Yes. Yes! Finally, David. There was something in here for you, David. This is something that links to your film. Little Mermaid. Don't say it, David, but I think this has got something to do with it. Focus on your film right now. Stop! Magic Mike! Yeah, an amazing performance, and it was fun to uh, get him to jump on Skype. I sent a message and organized a chat and uh, basically started off by asking him how that performance came to be. Um, they, they contacted me about, I think they contacted me about three years ago to do it originally. Um, and then I was kind of a little bit, 
I didn't really want to do it. And, and the other thing was, there was a mate of mine that was already on Britain's Got Talent, and he's a magician, and I didn't want to compete with him. Right. So I kind of went, no, I'm not really interested. And then they contacted me last year, because they send researchers out to go and kind of look at other people and what you know what's interesting out there. Uh, and one of the researchers had apparently come and seen one of my shows. So they went, look, we really like you, really want you to do something. And I said, look, I want to go on, I'll go on the show, but I don't want to do just magic because there's there's hundreds of magicians out there that are really good. Um, so I said, I just want to do something a bit different. I've got this madcap idea um, that I kind of come up with because I was, I was going through to Sky TV and trying to put a proposal together for a show for Sky TV. Right. And I wanted to combine stunts with magic so i said look i've got this idea of doing a live performance of stunts you know and magic um and this is my idea and i said i know it'll work and i know it'll make a really good impact um and they went okay we'll go for it Let, let's just do it so we had to go down to the palladium which is the theater that it's um it's played at in in the west end because they do the auditions there yeah and then we just kind of, I've got my mates together, um, Tony Christian, who's the guy who did the high fall. <laughs> and then I've got a mate, I've got a mate of mine, uh, Matt Sharon, to do the fire job, walking across the stage. And then I've got another mate of mine to do the Matrix. And then we came up with the Magic Mic as a bit of a kicker for the end, as a bit of a laugh. Um, and we just went and did it. I mean, we literally rehearsed the week before and then we went, sod it, let's go and do it. <laughs> um, and it was, it just went mental. It just went absolutely mental. So, yeah, it was good. It was great, and then but after that, it was it was very very hard to come up with the next right idea because I, I I wanted to go on that stage with them not knowing what I did for a living. I didn't want them to know I was a stunt man because if I, if we told them it was a stunt man, they would be waiting for a stunt. Right. So I wanted to surprise them in that sense. So yeah, it was a bit different. It was a bit different. It was good. It was a, it was a good little. It was a good little idea. Yeah, and, like mate, it was awesome. The, the response was awesome. But what did it feel like for you being on stage when you, you know, you've got the idea and then it actually really works and then you see like Simon Cowell standing and clapping and the crowd going crazy? It must be pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, it was good. It, it went, it, it went a little bit mental, really. As I say, it was, it was. I didn't know the impact was going to be as it was because we kept it so secret. We had the guy in the wings ready because you've only got a fifteen-minute window right. to do um, to do a, a, a fire job because otherwise that person starts to dry out. Um, so I said to them, "Look, I've got to be first up. I've got to be first up." Um, and they went, "Okay, that's fine." Um, so we uh, we put Tony up in the box and then we we built a box rig the, the morning of the show uh, and we put it in the stall so they they couldn't see it so it was covered in black. Wow. Uh, and we took we took three rows of seats out. So the, they did the first show, which was in the daytime. So we left it there so that the judges got used to that object being there. So they didn't care about it. Right. So by the time the second show was happening, it was no surprise that something had appeared there. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. I mean, I'm used to doing live shows anyway. I'm, I, I'm from a live show background. So I just forgot about the cameras. I just played it for the audience. And that's what... That's what worked, you know. I played it for the audience. I played it for the audience on the second uh, audition as well, the the um, semi final when we went through the wall and stuff. But we just, we, I just played it for the audience. I didn't care about the cameras. Well, you nailed it, man. And, and you talk about like you know your, your experience. Let's talk about your story. Like, where did it all start? Um, well, I well I'm 47 now, so I, I I went to I went to just a normal school, and then I I went to a place called Italia Conti which is a really famous um, uh, musical arts um, uh, school. So I went there from the age of about 17 till I was 20, nearly 21. Uh, then I came out and did a lot of musical theatre um, and a lot of plays and little bits of TV and stuff. And then I was at the Opera House in Covent Garden and I met my best mate now, who is, um, he's married to uh, Hugh Jackman's sister, Sonia Jackman. And he had just qualified as a stuntman, and he went, mate, you need to be a stuntman. And I went, really? He went, yeah, yeah, train to be a stuntman. So I took four years out, wow. and I did, all my, I did all my training, and then I qualified uh, 1999, so I've, I've been doing it 20 years now. And then uh, the magic, I've been doing since I was sort of 10 years old. 
Uh, and I've never let it go. I've just kind of kept going. It, it got me through college and I'd be gigging on a regular basis. So it was just kind of a bit of a bit of a fate thing, really, to culminate both things together. Do you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> a bit weird, but it was, it was good. <laughs> it's pretty amazing when you think of like magic, hypnosis, stunt work and acting. You've kind of got all the bases covered there. Like what, what, how did the hypnosis come around? Well, I, I was doing a lot of gigs. I was doing a hell of a lot of gigs. And people have a preconceived idea that if you do magic, you're able to do hypnosis. And I knew I knew nothing about hypnosis, only the stuff that I kind of read. And, and then uh, I was working with, uh, I don't know if you get him out in Australia. There's a guy called Paul McKenna. Yeah, big time. He comes here a lot, yep. Right. So I was stage managing at the, my, at the theatre that I worked, I used to work at up, just up the road from me. And Paul McKenna was on for a week. Ah. So I started watching the show. And I was watching the show and I was thinking, this isn't real to me. These people are actors. Uh, <laughs> and the girl that I was seeing at the time, I said, right, you're going to come and see the show and I want you to go on stage. No matter what, get on that stage. Uh, and she was musical theatre as well. And he put her under and she was the star of the show. Wow. So that I, I brought her back home and I said, right, what did it feel like? What were your experiences? What blah 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 blah. Uh, and then I studied under a guy called Malcolm Drinham, who was quite up in the hypnosis world, and I just wanted to learn stage hypnosis. So I said to him, look, I just want to learn. So I kind of did um, a residential course with him. There's courses you can do online now, but I, I don't really trust the courses online because. You don't really find out the rudiments and the real basis of hypnosis and what it's all about. Um, and then I just started putting it in the act, and that was it. It just kind of, yeah, I just kind of do it. So I do a lot of the mentalism, and I do a lot of you know, the hypnosis side of it. So if I'm at a wedding, I might stick somebody's hand to the table, or I'll get them <laughs> to forget their, forget their name, or give them nautical Tourette's, or every five seconds they put their hand up like they're going to ask a question, but they forget what it is. So I just kind of combined it, really, and just, just kind of put it into the act. Um, because everybody just had that preconceived idea, oh, you do magic, you must be able to control my mind. So, yeah, it was good. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I did it. And then I just started putting it in the show. So um, It must be a yeah, uh, handy was, skill to have at times, yeah. too, if uh, you know you ask a girl out and she says no, and you think, man, I'm not giving up, and there's like... <laughs> put her under. It's amazing what you can do. I'm closing this operation now. No, you can't do that. We're going back to Tom's house. Fuck you! I stood down. What the fuck happened to you, eh, Tom? Ambition! You were losing him, Yeah, well, I suppose we all do in the end. Look, I just want to see her tonight. Go on, let that happen. Oh, just before she ruins her life, Tom. Look, call it a favour to the master, eh? I love her, Tom. Thank you. The life of a stuntman. Um, what, what's been some of the great moments for you doing that? And tell us about some of the films you've worked on. Oh my God! Some of the films. Um, well, I'm just I've just done Fast and Furious Nine. Um, I did Rogue One, uh, Born Ultimatum, Pirates of the Caribbean. I did Star Wars: Force Awakens. Wow. Um, Safe, Safe House. Uh, Maleficent. Oh my God! The last four Harry Potters. Um, uh, part, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean was on Stranger Tides. Um, I, I, you just kind of forget. You just wow. do these because it's. A, but the day of the stuntman, everybody has a preconceived idea. You know, I turn up, I get in my Willy Bago, they call me on set, I do my stunt, I go home. It ain't like that, <laughs> believe me. Um, you know, when you're on Game of Thrones and you're standing in the middle of a field at four o'clock in the morning covered in horse crap uh, with a sword in your hand waiting to get hit by a horse or get killed, it isn't <laughs> as romantic. It isn't as romantic as people seem to think. Um, but yeah, my first film, I mean, my first ever film, uh, when I was, as, I was green as grass, I did Blade 2. Wow. So that was my first, that was my first kind of film and my first, yeah, sort of big thing, really. And then I went, I did uh, Legend of Zorro. Um, and you're asked to do really weird things, strange things. You know, you might be asked to just double an actor or just run down the street or something like that. Because if they perceive it as too dangerous for the actor, then you're 
kind of brought in to do it. So, yeah, it could be day-to-day basis. It could be really exciting. Um, some days it can be really, really boring. So you just take it as it comes, really. Was it always a bit of a dream for you, though? Like, uh, did you kind of manifest wanting to be around films and stuff like that? No, I, I, I never saw myself... I never saw myself starting out as a stuntman um, because it wasn't something I... It wasn't something I knew about because I thought it was kind of a family thing. You know, you... Uh, your dad was a stuntman, so you became a stuntman. And back in those days, because we didn't have the internet and we didn't have access to the information we've got now, uh, it was quite hard to it was quite hard to find out the information. So you had to go around and, and in this country, I mean, you've got an Australian stunt academy now, I think. Uh, but in this country, it's six skills to a very high standard. So you have certain categories in each skill. So you have a falling category, a skill and agility, a riding category, a driving category, a fight category. But you're not allowed more than two things out of each category. So you might be a really good fighter and have got boxing, judo, karate, taekwondo, kickboxing. But you're only allowed two of those because they want to make sure that you've got a wide spectrum of skills. So mine was I did skydiving, uh, which is like a minimum of 200 jumps. Uh, scuba diving, which was dive master, a paddy or instructor. Uh, fencing, which was gold medal in all three weapons, epee, foil, saber. I did swimming, which was a, a life saving award. Trampolining, which was a gold medal standard. Gymnastics, which was their own individual one. And then I started doing driving on top of that, uh, horse riding on top of that. So you kind of have the skills afterwards once you get on. But you're not guaranteed you're going to work once you get on. That's the thing about it as well. Right, so yeah, you look back on the career so far. What's what's been the best, or I don't know, what's the craziest thing you've done as far as a stunt that you think, wow, I even can't believe I did that. Well, the fir- one of the first jobs I ever had to do stunt wise, my big for me, I had to do, I had to come off the top of an of a uh, old sort of style that was that was doing about thirty kilometres an hour, and I had to come off the top of the top of the train, land on the ground hit the ground tumble, and then a horse rides over me. So that was a bit like, whoa, I've never done this before. Um, My first ever job was falling down a staircase, which I've never fallen down intentionally in my life. And I was like, how do I do this? They just (laughs) think, we'll just throw yourself down. All right, away you go. Um, Just been doing some nice jobs on fast. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you know, riding broomsticks and getting pulled off broomsticks and getting hit by cars. It's just a really, it's a really strange... It's a strange profession. You know, when you're sitting there with stormtroopers around you and you're all having a cup of coffee and you're discussing what you've been doing, you know, <laughs> the night before, it, it, it's, to anybody outside, the, you know, the, the area, it's really weird. But to us, you know, you're sitting there, you know, dressed as an alien and your mate's dressed as an alien and you go, so what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm going down the pub tonight. Oh, nice, okay. And it's strange. It's, it's, it's odd. It really is weird. But it's fun. It's a nice a bunch of people, your life in their hands, you know, you're doing a fire job, you're relying on those people to put you out. So, you know, build a box rig and make it safe for you. And, you know, it, it's a real camaraderie there. It's, it's good. It's great. And it's got, as I say, when I got on the register, there was 230 people. There's now nearly 550 people on the register now. So it's, it's, become, it's become very popular and busy. You are certainly in shape, and I guess you've got to be in shape to do that. To be, you know, to be thrown around a lot. But injury-wise, like, what's the what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you, injury-wise? Uh, I've broken my I broke my collarbone in three places. Ouch! Uh, I snapped my left bicep. I've done both of my meniscus in my knees. Um, I've done one of the vertebrae in my neck, and I've done both my ankles. I've uh, I've, I've uh, yeah, all the ligaments in my ankles I've done. That's pretty so, extensive. Yeah, that was on day one. So day <laughs> two. No. Um, yeah, it's it's. Um, if you don't come out, if you come out of it unscathed, it it means you've either been very very lucky or you didn't do the gags. So it's just one of those things, really. All right, you mentioned Hugh Jackman before, and there's some good pictures of you with him on your Instagram and stuff like that. Um, what's what's your yeah. affiliation with Australia? Have you been out here? I have. I was out there. I was out there last year. I did the East Coast, uh, not last year before. My with my ex, um, we came out, and um, 
we did all down from Byron Bay through there and then we stayed in Sydney for New Year's and then we flew over to New Zealand. I did a couple of weeks in New Zealand, but we came we came back from New Zealand um, uh, and I absolutely loved it. Adored it. Fantastic. I had a really, really good time. Yeah, really, really liked it. Loved the weather. Loved the outdoors. Um, I loved the access to be able to do just anything. Do you know what I mean? It's, it was lovely. Really, really good. Really, really good time. Yeah, I want to come back at some point. I'd like to come back. Awesome. But um, all depends on work, you know. Yeah. So, mate, how how what dedication does it take for you in, in life? I mean, what keeps you motivated? You, I mean, are you at the gym all the time? Are you, are you constantly kind of grinding on, on your career and hustling to get stuff done? No. I, I'm an active person, so I like to do things. Um, and I, 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 I'm pretty motivated. If I, go, if I want to go and do something, I go and do something. Life's too short. You know, I've seen a lot of friends of mine that um, – a lot of musical theatre guys and, and, and girls that are very, very talented, extremely talented, but have never have never gone to that next step. And I've seen people on TV, as we all do, and film, and I go, how the hell did you get on there? And and, 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 and it is the luck of the draw, and it's not what you know, it's who you know. So I'm very, very lucky, touch wood, in the fact of what I've done and where I've gone. Um, I always keep my feet on the ground and... Um, and you know, my mum and dad uh, are very, very, always been very supportive. I mean, they wouldn't be able, to, I wouldn't be able to have done anything with this, with, you know, without them really in that sense, because they paid for me to go through college, and then I came out and did a lot of work, and then suddenly went, I'm going to be a stunt man. They went, if you want to go and do it, you go and do it. Because <laughs> otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your, you know, spend the rest of your life going, well, you know, what if, what if? Um, so yeah, I keep myself fit. I mean, as I say, I'm 47 now, so I, I train probably four times a week when I can. Um, and I'll try and get new skills and get my skills up to up to scratch and little things. But as I say, you'll you, you'll be asked to do really weird things. You know, you can't really prepare for getting thrown out of a window. You can't really prepare for getting hit by a car. Let's just say you're getting hit by a car. You might prefer to be on the right hand side, and then they go, "Well, the person that you're doubling is left hand side." So you've got to be ready for that. You've got to just have a good aerial awareness and. Um, but but the day to day basis, you're just go asked to get to do really weird things. Nine times out of ten, I'm either getting shot, stabbed, killed, choked out. Because I don't play romantic leads. I usually play killers, assassins, <laughs> thugs, mafia bodyguards. So you know, with this look, I kind of get you know set as a as a baddie. So uh, there's actually a Facebook page. It's called Try and Get Matt to the End of the Film because I've been killed so many times. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I want your boss. I ain't telling you shit. I was hoping you'd say that. I've got rights. Not today. Speaking of your yeah. acting, there's, there's there's great scenes with you and The Rock. I mean, what was it like being on set with him? And I, I, he seems to be one of the most friendly people of all time. And then all of a sudden, you're in a great scene where he's throwing you around. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, no, he was. He was lovely. Really, really nice. First of the time I worked with him, uh, when they did Hercules, um, he put me forward to do another another fight with him because he was really nice. We got on really well. Um, and that scene that we did in the, the uh, interrogation room, that was... Two days to film that, and wow. it was full on. I mean, God, I was bruised and battered after it. It was good. It was really, really good. And he, he, he was really nice guy, really nice guy. And actually, funny enough, he, he uh, at the end of the two days, I was literally just going to get changed because it's, it's quite rare that you get to have a, a picture with, uh, you know, with, with actors sometimes because they can be a little bit funny. Um, and. Um, and he literally called me back. He said, "Come on!" He said, "We're having a picture." He said, "That's going on my that's going on my Instagram." I think it was or something like that. He said, "Because you have earned your money. You've earned your money today." He said, "You have earned your money." I was, I was like, "Yeah, cheers, cheers, Dwayne." No, he's a really nice guy. Top, top guy. I can ask for a nice, nicer actor. Yeah. There's some lovely actors out there. You know, there's some people that are a bit precious, but uh, you, know, you just. 
get on with it and let them get on with it. Do you know what I mean? That's awesome, man. It's great looking at your reel. Um, yeah, I love asking people about like living ultimate dreams or chasing ultimate dreams. So, what what is that for you if you could live the ultimate dream? Do you know what I think? I'm, I think I'm living it. I'm 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 getting paid for something I enjoy doing. Uh, I have a laugh on a regular basis, um, and I'm, in, I'm in, I've got no, you know, again, touch wood, I've got no health problems, I've got, I've got money in the bank, I've got a lovely house, I, 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 I can do what I want when I want, uh, I'm not a millionaire, and do you know what, nine times out of ten, uh, money isn't everything, you know, it's, it, it's, it's good, I get paid, I get paid on two levels, well, three levels really, because if I do if I do the hypnosis shows, the magic shows, or the close up, uh, and the stunts, I'm getting paid for something I enjoy doing, and and that that's amazing because I know so many people that are just nine to five and they hate their job and they do this and they do that, and I think, gosh, you might be, you know, I'm getting up early in the morning. Okay, it can take over your life. I mean, the last six months of my life has been fast and furious. So I started rehearsals the week before we did the second audition for BGT. Wow. So they gave me a couple of days off to do a rehearsal. Uh, and then they gave me this. It was a Sunday we did it on. Uh, and they, they said, you know, everybody left. Uh, we, we had rehearsed on the Saturday. And everybody just said good luck. And I went, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, and then we just rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed from that point on. And then literally, as I say, I finished tomorrow or Tuesday. So it can take over your life and you you become a bit of a slave to it. That's the problem. Because you don't want to say no. Right. And I've missed many a celebration with people, you know, many a birthday party and a wedding because I'm I'm away working or I'm you know in another country. And don't get me wrong, it's fantastic being in other countries. I mean I was out in South Africa for six months on Safe House. And it was absolutely wonderful. It was fantastic. We had a great time. But you're away from your family for six months, you know, and you don't really get to see the place because you're working Monday to Friday, sometimes Saturdays, you get your Sunday off and you're back to the, you know, you're back to it. So it, it can it can take over your life a little bit. Um, but it's fun. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I can't see myself doing anything else. And I, I, I'm so lucky how I kind of fell into it because I don't really know what I've done. I'd have done probably the magic full time. Um, yeah, and I think and I think the way my brain goes, I think if I did one thing, I think I'd become bored of it. Whereas I've got the happy medium of doing the stunts and then, you know, the weekend I'm entertaining, I'm doing my own stuff or I'm on the cruise, you know, doing the show and then I'm back doing stunts. So I'm, I'm skipping around and I'm not worried about not, not getting the phone call to go on to this job or that job because, you know, I do it and I, I enjoy it. I, I, I have a laugh doing it. So that's the that's kind of the main thing. Awesome, man. Well, you're great at what you do and it's uh, awesome to meet you. I hope to meet you in person sometime and uh, thank you so thank much you for the chat you. and being on the show. Appreciate it. Cheers, Andy. You take care. Cheers, bud. Take care. Yes, there you go. Super fun to have him on the show. Make sure you jump on his website and you can read all about him and check out the different clips. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the platform. Oh,